What's going okay. on? Okay, so, uh, well, today is kind of crazy because we just uh, realized that we can apply for this fastgrants.org uh, thing. Have you heard about it? Wait, what's it called? Fastgrants.org. Um, okay. It's kind of fast funding for COVID-19 science. Oh, yeah, great. And apparently it comes from the tech industry. So that's the promise of being kind of fast yeah. and just getting decisions in under 24 hours. So yeah. we're, we are preparing uh, some form of a, uh, let, let's call it a grant proposal something okay. and assembling all the people together. Um, overall, I would say that uh, we, the, the major progress that we've accomplished is basically we started piecing things together. So all the data infrastructure, all the code stuff, and even did the, the quick demo uh, which okay. you can uh, explore on, on our website. Oh, it's great. Kind of just, awesome. Just the proof of concept for now. So don't uh, get too too excited about it because there is not much exciting yet. Yeah. But essentially what it does, it's kind of a dashboard as of right now that okay. explores the, the papers from Cord19 that okay. we have um, some form of AI extractions for. So to, to give you an example, and maybe we can actually try some neuroscience related things. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What's the... I mean, it, this searches just the COVID papers though. Is that right? Yes, just Not, COVID. Um, I mean, there are neurological... Just, you could try just neurological. There are neurological symptoms, you know? Yeah. Well, let's see. So we have 108 papers and we can see... Um, all kinds of, you know, uh, named entities that AI extracted so far from these. Um, okay. And this is basically the kind of the extraction, the high level extraction of different things that are related to neurological symptoms. So you see manifestations and different ontologies. So basically what it's listing there is what within that paper, what keywords were found is that like how many references to those keywords were found? Kind of, but not really keywords. It's kind of like unifying the concepts that the paper talks about, because you can see this like UMLS, for example, the Unified Medical Labeling System. It's, yeah. it's kind of bubbles up all kinds of different things that could be named in different ways, but okay. they are uh, combined into one. So essentially what, what happens here is that um, it's still, it's kind of a dashboard, but you can um, search for different things. Like let, let's do uh, angiotensin. Um, it'll be more, more diverse. Uh, what it does, a researcher that is interested in, in that specific area can actually um, get into more granular searches and, and see very specific like ACE2 receptors and all kinds of things. So instead of just a general, uh, you know, keyword search, there is more granularity to it. That's cool. Um, so, and yeah, and that's within that particular paper that's listed, right? Yeah. Or no, what is this 13,000, 8,000? So I just cleared the, the search. Oh, you cleared it. So okay. these are 13 or 1,000 different entities that uh, are present in this study, probably a big one or something. And then you can filter by study type uh, or well, study yeah. design. Great. This is preliminary work of classifiers. Again, yeah. uh, there is a lot of stuff to be improved. Mentions of gender, mentions of age. So you can actually see all the elderly stuff. Oh, what? that's amazing. Um, that's very, very helpful, I think. Yeah, because uh, we got this uh, query from one of the physicians and he was trying to use PubMed and other places to find elderly related papers on right. the cardiovascular diseases and it, it was just impossible. Right, no, the way this is done is excellent because you can see even like in the titles, you can't tell necessarily what's, you know, what has, what age the patient is. Some of them say, some of them don't. So that's yeah. great. Um, and so, and then the mentions in literature reviews, what is that box? That's... Yeah, actually, that, that's a great question. I think those are extra uh, ontologies that, that we use, like related to smoking or cerebrovascular diseases. Oops. Within the category that you had selected. Yeah. So with the elderly, how much male or, okay. Yeah. Mentions in literature reviews. But is that only reviews or is it all the papers within that category? 
Um, see, like it, it's, it's not very clear because we clearly haven't figured out the UI UX of this and we just piece it, pieced all different things together. Yeah. So the way this is, I mean, I, I get it. I think it's really great as far as you have like each box is sort of a filter system, right? If you click on one, it'll filter. And then mm -hmm. is it by order? Like as in the first you click, it filters out. And then within whatever filter you've set, the next box you click, it'll be within that filter. Is that how it works? Kind of. So you can select Elsevier, Time Series, Papers, and okay. um, Elderly. And that Elderly. Oh, that's perfect. And then there are also all kinds of, uh, you know, um, columns that we're not showing yet, but we have things like extraction of the sample size, the age. Um, it's, it's something we haven't integrated yet, but basically uh, the latest work that um, was done is extraction tables, some scary code stuff. I see. Uh, that's the problem was you're saying yeah you need nice front end GUIs yeah, and no, this stop. this one uh, uh, let me see how to open it in on the full screen uh -huh, okay so you're saying this is a table that could be extracted from the tool you're showing me before Larry yeah so this you can actually see that it extracts days age study type sample size um, and obviously these things are just, you know, inexistent in, in majority of literature in, ter in terms of the uh, ability to filter by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So example. in the previous tool, can you, in the previous tool, can you set your preferred filters and not yet then say export? Okay. You, but, but the idea is to link. Yeah. Uh, let me show you actually the, the, um, the approximate visualization of how it exists in my brain and um, and, and basically it, it kind of looks like a graph. Hold on, wait a second. All right, here we go. This one. It looks like a um, one direction graph and let me start from the very left. So there's CORD-19, there's a person that is interested in angiotensin receptors, viral agents, COVID-19, it kind of gives the direction. Then we uh, show them a more broad um, intersection of different relationships, kind of the knowledge graph that showcases that, hey, you would be interested in ACE probably or RB blockers. And then they click, 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 they broaden the actual direction of research but then we give them opportunity to narrow it down using the filters, uh, collections. So that way, okay. researchers can actually build collections of interest. So like, give me papers from Italy, only el elderly from Elsevier. And then they can share it to Twitter and basically other researchers can collaborate and even extend that. Like the same collection, but plus Andrew Tinsen mentioned or something. That's great. Um, and so basically all that would be set by the search tool and then you would just have your table exported. It looked like you could see on the right hand side in the tool, I'll have to go play with it later. It looked like you could scroll over and see a lot of these, a lot of these extracted uh, values. Is that right? For some papers, yes. For, for the others, like it, it's really a, a technological issue now, integrating all of these pieces from yeah. hundreds of uh, collaborators. But yeah, and the, as the last step, it's really about navigating the collection with specific columns. So obviously for clinical trials, there will be specific columns like sample size, age, study, design, sex. Um, okay. For, you know, for graph related things, like the things that you've selected, there will be another specific ones like viral agent, ACE, IRB, and, and other columns. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I think it's hard to understand without having like, playing with it and seeing exactly yeah. what it extracts. That's yeah. great. I think that's the idea is there. I mean, I think it's really good. So you guys are still working on integrating these kind of distinct parts into one interface. Yeah. The thing that I wanted to get uh, feedback on, and I think I already got it by your excitement of, of seeing uh, you know it all working together. 
Um, but this notion of kind of like iterative, like inclusion of different things, I think yeah. that that's what we thought will be very useful. And it seems like you really like that one. I, I love it. I think it's great. I, there's, I mean, there's just not anything quite like that. And I think it would be incredibly useful because right now we're just doing Boolean, like typing in all the words we want to be there. You know, this is a much better way. The filtering system is awesome. I will say that in your top left corner, you have the different sources. Mm -hmm. I would say people are least likely to use that. Like, like just Elsevier, for instance, I don't think mm, people would generally filter based on that, but I don't know. I could be wrong. I just would never personally like think to, Oh, only Elsevier journals. I mean, I just wouldn't filter in that sense, but maybe some do. Uh, yeah. You know, after the Lancet scandal was the hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. I mean, this is a problem with every major journal is that they all are subject to everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. You know, every journal. Yeah. yeah. That's the byproduct uh, of the, the existing process. It is. Uh, so it's not bad to have there. I just don't know if it would play a very prominent role. But again, people can just leave it unselected, right? Mm -hmm. And all will still be there. I think it's incredibly helpful. Um, I know you don't have the separate tools um, integrated yet, but I was thinking about this. We today. actually have the health metrics tool. We, we, we're just not oh. showing that data. Okay. Like you have that as where you could put a box and see the score and filter by score. Yep. Oh, that's great. That would be cool too. Yeah, because um, we after we uh, discussed alt metrics that uh, that you know call, uh, we integrated it right away. We just failed to have like there there was no interface where yeah. where you would see that. So we have all the data. It's being uh, constantly collected. We just need user interface, and we recently got four or five UI UX researchers helping us out. So yeah. hopefully we'll come up with something um, navigatable soon. That's awesome. It already to me looks usable. I mean, it's not, it, it seems very intuitive already. So um, I think it's a really cool system. I, I would just encourage you guys to, I mean, when possible or, or when comfortable to actually start like advertising it because I feel like the more people who really use it, the more feedback you'll get that's very specific, you know? Yeah. Um, but if, I mean, maybe you're not quite there yet, but. Um, yeah, we're kind of thinking of uh, focusing on biomedical researchers first, um, just from the perspective of building something very, very specific to them, but then expanding and treating that as, you know, profiles, you know, on, on this whatever tool or platform or product, there's going to be different profiles. And if you're a neuroscientist, you come in and you have pre-built kind of things that you would be interested in, and then you can tweak them. And that way you start from, you know, some profile that is already similar to you, and then you can specify, um, you know, differences. Okay. Yeah. As in like you would pick when you sign up, like, oh, oh I, I'm going to be interested in neuroscience yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, again, I think that the tool itself will allow people to sort of self-select as they go for different searches, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure you necessarily need to kind of predetermine or make people choose the box to start with, you know? But um, yeah, um, I mean, essentially what we want to create is, uh, I mean, as less of a friction as possible. So just, you know, log in with LinkedIn. We already know that you're a neuroscientist you're probably interested in this, this, and that. And here's what, what's happening. You know, here's trending searches in um, Oh, I see. Your you have like a front page. Like a, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, that, that could be cool. I mean, but again, I think the, the best part of the tool will just be enabling scientists to follow their curiosity. Like, oh, yeah. you know, what is known about like endothelial cells and you know. The curiosity is definitely a word that we constantly use. I'm almost thinking of naming this tool curiosity, you know. <laughs> I can see why. I mean, again, I would use it for that. Like, I'm, I'm curious about these things that I don't, you know, I don't know how they work yet, but that's how researchers get their ideas, right? Like, yeah. you know, if there's some connection that I'm like, oh, I wonder if, you know, it infects endothelial cells, if it could affect, you know, release to local neurons or whatever, you know, that's not super applicable, but something like that, it would be yeah. outside my field. Like we've talked about is using this as a tool 
to get information outside of my field and somehow connect it to something inside of my field or that would yeah. be a huge value. Definitely lots of potential, but you know, the entropy keeps increasing. We're trying yeah. to package it as much as possible. There's so many different initiatives popping up, um, you know, as, as the world comes back to re realization that COVID is not gone and mm -hmm. people are, you know, finally understanding that, hey, we actually need to solve this. Um, all kinds of different teams and groups are being formed. I uh, just had a call a couple of days ago was this um, Stanford, UNESCO, UN group. Okay. And yeah, it's, it's just crazy how much stuff is happening. So we're trying to push in a very focused manner and just get something to, um, to researchers as soon as possible. I think that's great. I mean, the sooner you're out there, the more people will know about it and start using it. And it'll snowball, I yeah. think, from there. All right. Uh, I'll probably uh, send you kind of a quick update on like UI, UX or something. And sure. feel, feel free to explore the, the tool on our website. Maybe you'll have some ideas. I will actually, you know, I hadn't had the chance yet. So I'm going to do that now. All um, right. It looks like it's in good shape. I'm, I'm excited for you. I think it, it's looking really good. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll probably try to organize more of these like quick calls with uh, Olya and, and other Rockefeller people because you guys basically shaped it. It's, uh, you know, a very unique um, nice. form of, you know, guidance or, or something. And uh, I like, cause when I go to like the, the actual videos on YouTube, um, I, I understand how much of different things that we are working on from the technology standpoint were just results of people listening to the calls with you guys and be like, oh, wow, this makes sense. All right, let's, let's do this. That's great. Well, Very I'm glad. Cool. I mean, if you also want feedback on um, the grant from someone who doesn't know much about what you're doing to see how readable. That would be or, great. Just, yeah, send it my way. I'm happy to look it over and give a, a naive outside perspective on it. So. All right. That's amazing. All right. I'll, I'll do that. I'll finish up uh, a draft today and I'll send you a link. Great. Okay. Good luck. Right. Sounds oh, good. Great. Congrats. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Oh, we'll get in touch. Bye.